Okay, so I just want to talk first of all um, in response to something I just heard about about addiction and and also in, in reference to craving God. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat what um, what I heard from my teacher Hawkins on this. Um, so, generally speaking, you know when when we incarnate. You know, we have we have a level of con we have a level of consciousness in which we incarnate. So, if you if you were to calibrate every soul that incarnates, they have a different level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's their baggage of karma, uh, their past life karma once they incarnate. So, someone's you know might be born in Africa uh, with no parents, and someone might be born in Buckingham Palace. So, why? Well, there's not by accident. There's a different levels of karma. Now, the thing with addiction, addiction is not is not Addiction, as, as used by 12-step fellowships, is not the same as what normal people have. Normal people do not have what we call as addiction. So addiction is actually when, uh, in the terms of like you're drinking yourself to death or eating yourself to death, that is not what normal people have. That is something, that is something different, where they're dying and they're still, they're still doing the thing. That is not what a normal person has. So there is... Um, so it's like when you start getting selfish, when you start getting selfish in a lifetime and start having selfish behaviours which are not in the interest of the highest good and starting to affect others, there is a point in your karmic reincarnations where you cross a certain threshold. You cross a certain threshold and then you are now <coughs> what is called an addict. It's like you've lost the spiritual privilege of using your willpower to stop a life-threatening uh, addiction. That's not the same as what normal people have. Mm -hmm. So it's clearly, it's, I, I, I tend to call it, in my own words, um, we have certain spiritual privileges. One of them is when you have a certain spiritual connection to God, you have a certain buoyancy in the soul. So you're not going to kill yourself by doing something to the gates of insanity and death. You're just not. Like a normal person may have a few extra biscuits, but you're not going to see them three years later with a heart attack and still putting biscuits in their mouth. That is something different, you know. So that is addiction. And what's happened is that the level of selfishness in the incarnate lives has now meant that it's like your, your license to use willpower to stop something that you, which was, if you like, a, an abuse of selfishness in a lifetime, that's suddenly cut off. When that's cut off, you can no longer use willpower ever again until you have a spiritual awakening. So that is not what normal people have. There is a difference between what we call uh, an addiction in a 12-step fellowship and what normal people say, well, I had an extra biscuit for lunch. That, that's different. So what that then means is now um, the soul will, will basically pursue addiction to the, you know, eventually to, to, to death and get reincarnated over and over and over again you know, reincarnating with addiction again and die, reincarnating with addiction again until they finally surrender and have a spiritual awakening. So that's something very, very different to what normal people have. And that's why, you know, that was the birth of the 12-step fellowships because quite literally, even if you had Carl Jung as your personal psychotherapist, you know, it's not like I have an extra biscuit, that's my problem. It's like I'm killing myself with alcohol. I cannot stop with my willpower. And even Carl Jung, uh, uh, willpower is no longer an option. So that's different. And anyone who's got a life-threatening illness in a 12-step program, willpower, that privilege of using willpower has been revoked until you find, until you, your soul is reconnected with God. So that's something different to people who are, who are not addicts will not understand, quite literally, uh, what I've said. But people who are addicts who've literally gone to the gates of death and hell and cannot stop, even if they want to, will know. So that's the great, and the great thing about addiction is <clears throat> that you, you, you're basically going to go to hell and die and get born again and again and again with addiction over and over again, lifetime. So it's one of the fastest ways to get it to get God. You know, like a normal person who's not suffering enough in a lifetime. You know, they can watch football and rugby the whole lifetime, not making much spiritual progress, and they, and they die, and they're quite, that's okay for them. 
But, you know, when you go into the depths of extreme spiritual despair with addiction, then you, it's like you either get God or die. And like in 12-step fellowships, you'll get people who, you know, it's, they don't really, I mean, it's kind of a bit like this, even though it's not quite as literal as this. It's like either you surrender and you get a spiritual awakening or you're going to die. Mm. And, uh, and, and they go, because they kind of know on a deep level what that means, surrendering to God. And they go, I'd rather die. So they go, fair enough, okay. So, <laughs> so you're just going to come back again. And you're still going to have that frequency of addiction. So you're going to go, go, go another round. So it's a very fast way. Once you're a proper addict, you're just going to go on this extreme cycle until you get God one, one of these lifetimes. So that is, um, I just wanted to say that, now in terms of, um, okay, so, um, okay, I'll make, I'll make